Good morning. Why you ever chose me has always been a mystery. All my life I've been told I belong. But at the end of the line, with all the other not quite. With all the never get it right. But it turns out they are the ones you were looking for all this time. Cause I'm just nobody trying to tell everybody all about somebody to save my soul. You rescued me, gave my heart a song to sing, lived for the world to see nobody but Jesus. Live for the world to see nobody but Jesus. Moses had stage fright. He even brought a rock to a sword fight. The twelve outsiders, nobody would have chosen, and you changed the world. Everybody's got a purpose. Roll up the story now. When I hear that devil start talking to me, saying, Who do you think you are? I say, I'm just a nobody. Try to tell everybody. All about somebody to save my soul. Ever since you rescued me, gave my heart a song to sing. Live for the world to see, nobody but Jesus. Live for the world to see, nobody but Jesus. Another blood bought faithful member of the family. And if they all forget my name, well, that's finally. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. So let me go down, 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 down in history. Down in history. That's another blood bought faithful member of the family. So Jesus, yeah. nobody, I'm a nobody, hey. all about somebody who wanna save my soul, and ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing, live for the world to see, nobody but Jesus, I'm living for the world. All right. Good morning, Cross Friends. Good morning. It's a great day to be alive, isn't it? This, uh, no, it's not cold, it's warm. We've been heating it up for you, brother. Uh, such a great honor and privilege to introduce to you Taylor Hammonds today. Uh, Taylor's one of those stories, got saved years and years ago, but came to me about three weeks ago and said, you know, there's just something missing. I got baptized before, but it really didn't mean anything. So he's coming today, and he's getting baptized, and he's got all of his entourage. He's, he went to our boot camp, and he comes to FAR on every Monday night, and he always contributes. He's a smart feller, and uh, we're so glad today, Taylor, to baptize you, brother. So, we baptize you today, Taylor, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ. Man, that is so awesome. Hey, happy Mother's Day. I just want to tell you about a couple of things real quick. Uh, number one... So, every, every Sunday at 1010, if you were between the ages of 18 and 25, if you question that, please let us know. Taylor will let you know if you're between the ages of 18 and 25. We are going to feed you free food at the ranch house. Yes, free food. Love it. Yeah. 
that's right. Um, now, Taylor has something to say. Load up your grill, uh, dads, or even, not even dads, if you want to dress up like your dad, you know, get the jorts and the good tube socks and the new balances, and uh, we're going to do a dad dressing contest, and I'm thinking golden spatula is what people need to be rewarded. Yes. Um, if you could, though, because we want to make sure that everybody gets fed, we don't care if there's 500 there, um, please uh, register your family in the app. Um, just open up our app and go to the little girls and games box and you can fill out your stuff there or online thank you Vanessa you go to the little events tab and there's a girls and games page uh, and since Shane Williams is not here he will be dressed up as a dad so uh, I just want to let you know real quick we are getting geared up for camp this year and we are going to Livingston Texas and we will be leaving July 5th it's going to be great going to be so hot. We're leaving July 5th and we're coming back July 9th. If you feel led to sponsor a kid or if you've got some work that you know you'd be willing to pay them for for their way to camp, uh, please come and find me and uh, just let me know. How much is it for a student to go to camp? 310 bucks. Um, and guys, you can, if you don't want to come and talk to Micah, because I know he looks like such a exciting person to talk to all the time <laughs> then you can also do it on the website and you can go to cbcctx.org um, we can give online you can also give in the barrels that are around the building and in the foyer you can text 903-500 beef um, and we're so thankful for your generous hearts we couldn't do all of these events we couldn't take kids to camp um, and we couldn't be here doing what we're doing right now without you guys um, and without your generosity. So thank you so much. And now enough with the boring stuff, the person you're really waiting on. It wasn't me. <clears throat> all right, all right. A uh, yeah, very enthusiastic crowd here today. All right, here we go. All right, uh, for Mother's Day, all right, it is, of course, Mother's Day. Somebody just got a wake-up call, uh-oh. Uh, it is Mother's Day, and uh, for Mother's Day, my wife and my mother both asked me not to do any jokes about them, uh, so that's what I'm going to do next year. And uh, it actually, uh, I'm actually a fairly sentimental guy. Uh, I know my mother's favorite flower, and I got that for her. It's a gold medal, all-purpose, and... Uh, not not one single man in the audience got that joke. <laughs> so if he's sitting there in silence, you, know, you can tell him later. It's all right. We'll work on that one on the way home. Um, I recently had a dream about the Planet of the Apes. Anybody remember that movie, Charlton Heston? All right, remember that one? Good one. Yeah, with a bunch of hairy monkeys riding around on horses with guns and stuff. And, uh, and then I, I realized, I thought, I'm not dreaming. I'm at the rodeo at Bar None. <laughs> Big Bar None crowd here today uh, it's different over there they had a hearse that was parked out by the church over there and it had a sticker on the back that said honk if you like my body <laughs> I know I make I, I, uh, I make a lot of jokes first of all if you feel guilty about laughing I went and did a speaking thing over there about two months ago and they love cross brand jokes so don't feel sorry for them one bit all right don't don't buy it they eat it up I actually had a guy from bar none come up to me and uh, apparently he was a little upset about all these jokes, and he said, hey, yeah, I want to talk. I said, well, you're getting pretty close. Just keep practicing, buddy. <laughs> all right, I'm doing one more, one more. All right, I went, my wife and I went to a Chinese restaurant, all right, last week, and we got fortune cookies after it's over with. And you know when you read your fortune cookie, they're normally something good, like, oh, you're going to have great wealth and happiness. I opened mine up and said that I was going to die a violent death. And I said, I said, what is the deal with this? And I showed it to my wife. I said, does, she said, does it say if I'll be acquitted or not on there? <laughs> all right. Some reminders to all of you fine folks out there. I want to let you know about the Love and Respect Workshop. That's going to be on June 4th and 5th. It's going to be on Friday and Saturday. If you have never been, please join us. It is a lot of fun. Uh, we have a sign. I think there's a sign up for that up at the front there. 
Um, if you want to find out what marriage is really about, uh, that's the place to do it. Uh, the government, all kinds of places are trying to tell us what marriage is and what marriage isn't. And uh, you know what, why don't we go and get it from the makers, okay? The, the uh, instruction manual, I know as men we don't like to use that very much, um, but let's find out what it, what was its uh, original intended purpose. And uh, if you are new here today, if you wouldn't mind, uh, fill out one of those cards on your chair and turn it into the people up there at the front of the desk up there. They've got uh, some, some things for you there, some gifts for you. That would be awesome. If you would, bow your heads and pray with me, please. Father, I thank you. I thank you for everything. I thank you for this home that I have uh, found here. I thank you for everyone who is attendance here today. I ask you to be with them, to open their hearts for what Mike has to say. It's, uh, it's not an easy message today, and, but it's something that's so important. And I, you know, I pray that they would take this and use it and uh, spread it to other people in your own little world this week. And uh, Father, I, I ask you to, to bless all the mamas out there and I ask a special prayer for all the people who, for whatever reason, aren't able to talk to their mama today. And we love you, Father, and we thank you so much. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's worship together.
Would y'all pray with me this morning? Father, we come to you this morning and we are so thankful. God, we're thankful for our mamas. God, that you gave them to us to teach us and to raise us and to bring us into this world, God. Jesus, if it wasn't for Mary, we wouldn't we wouldn't have you. We wouldn't have the vessel that helped bring you to earth and to save sinners like us. So God, I pray for every person in this room this morning that if they are dealing with a hurt or habit or a hang up, God, that you would just bind it up, that you would wrap it up and you would cast it as far as the east is from the west. 
God, that we would know that you are for us. You're not against us. That it doesn't matter how far we've strayed. You still open us. And you pour into us, God. And you use us for your purpose and your will. God, for those that are watching on Facebook this morning, God, we know that it's not just about a view count. It's not about any of that. It is reaching the unreached and teaching the reached. So God, I pray for those that are watching too. That something they hear today would would reach down and touch them. God, I pray for Pastor Mike as he comes out this morning that, that the message you've laid on his heart would speak loud and clear to each and every one of us. That we wouldn't turn off our ears and stop listening just because something stings or hurts a little. But that we would be open to receive it. It's all these things we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.
morning. So good to see you this morning. I want to say happy Mother's Day uh, to many of you that are here. However, I intercepted some uh, some notes from some of the mothers of 18 and youngers here. I just want to uh, hold you accountable. These will be presented to the elders this week. No, seriously, some of you uh, smart Alec moms said this, if at first you don't succeed, try doing it the way your mom said to do it in the beginning. Oh, amen, she says. That's the most reaction I've gotten out of some of you moms in years here. I lo- Here's what one mom said, I love all my kids equally except for the one that sleeps. I love that one more. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Silence is golden unless you have kids. Then silence is suspicious. You with me? Dragging me? All right, all right, all right. I like that. I like that. One mom said this, though, or one kid came to their mom and asked, uh, she said, Mom, what's it like to have the greatest daughter in the world? The mom said, I don't know. Ask your grandmother. (laughs) How about that one? (laughs) Oh, my goodness. See, it's not just up here we got sarcasm. I love it. So glad that you're here this morning. I'm going to do something I don't normally do. Uh, And I want to say welcome to everybody online, everybody that's listening to us uh, right now. I hope that you'll share this, especially because the sensitivity or the, excuse me, the sensitive nature of this topic. And and let me, it's nothing weird or anything like that. I just, it's weird for me to change my topic to meet the calendar. I don't like the calendar bossing me around. I'd rather be bossed around by the Holy Spirit. Y'all, y'all kind of with me? But I could, I could not do this today. I, I just look back at the year, year and a half we've had. I look back at all the stuff that many of you are going through right now. And I'm telling you, I had to look at the calendar. I landed on this topic, and I want to talk about matters pertaining to moms today. Yeah, it's going to be a little different, though. I am very thankful for my mom. I am very thankful for uh, my grandmothers. And uh, don't worry, we're not going to make you stand up like they made you at your old church. Remember that? Some of you are out of the will because you didn't show up when your grandmother told you she wanted to win that deal that day. Remember that? The millennials don't know about that, man. But us guys, the boomers know you had to show up. didn't matter. Even if you were preaching at another church, you had to go to your mother's church on that Sunday so she could get the... Uh, croissant what is that no that's what you eat isn't it oh y'all hush leave me alone even you people online leave me alone an old flower person I can't help it I'm an old speech and debate coach and so I have to give justification for my topics right and I feel like I really I think of course I really think some other preachers probably need to do the same thing because some of them are preaching some really useless stuff but I think there's a reason why I need to land on a Mother's Day topic on Mother's Day. I just think there's a reason I need to do that today. And if you think about it, um, it it's based on two things. And I and I kind of argued with the Lord for a little while and said, I, I really don't want to do that. I'd rather talk about something else. But then here's what comes in, because y'all know me. I'm a big watcher of culture and watcher of what's happening in trends. And you know, there's been a lot of research on Barna, Pew, Pew Research, and uh, here's what we know, two things. One, one, we're losing a generation to unbelief. Bummer, I'm not going to stand up here and talk, be negative all the time, but w- this, is, this is based on research, based on observational data. All you got to do is look. All you got to do is go volunteer at the public school. All you got to do... All you got to do is watch attendance trends in local churches. All you got to do is watch the Facebook feeds of millennials and down, and you're going to find out, um, me not judging, because I don't judge lost people, I don't judge unbelievers, but just simply saying that some of the the statistics that I found this week, the stats that I found this week, oh my gosh, says that the children of millennials, the children of millennials, there's... only about four per, one survey said only about four percent of them were interested in Jesus stuff. 
Only 4% of millennials kids, of millennials kids. And I know we pick on millennials all the time. I don't mean to, but I raised three of them, and you're just weird. <laughs> I know, we're the blame. I know, I know. Why am I talking about this today? We're visibly, statistically, observationally, and experientially losing a generation because I've seen it and we experience it here based on that there's a second observation all right keep in mind we're losing a generation of kids the second ge uh, observation is this I believe that of that generation moms are the high impact influencers of that next generation and I know the dads are too um I know you're saying, well, wait a second, we're, we're a good family. If you are a balanced family and both of you or the dad is taking spiritual lead, that is great. That is unusual, though. In almost all the research, most folks will say that mom is the go-to person for the kids when they got a Jesus question. And you think about it, I mean, I got a chair sitting in my house. We've rocked three babies. Now we're rocking four grandbabies. I used to sit in that chair when I was 19 years old. I'm 58 right now. Now, Ricky had to put it back together a couple of times. But I sat in that chair. My dad was a pastor, but you know who I went and talked to? Right after I got saved, I, my mom and I had the conversation. Now, my dad and I did too, but I don't know. It was, just, it, was just a, it was just something natural that I just went to mom first and said, hey, What's up with this? What's up with that? What do you believe about this? What should I think about that? And so I believe that moms probably have at least access to the most influence with the kids. Last time I checked, dad spent about three minutes a day in meaningful conversation, if all at all, with their kids. And you're going, no, I'm, my conversation is very meaningful with my children. Yeah. Go clean your room. Are you going out dressed like that? Did you put gas in the car? That is not meaningful conversation. Don't worry. I'm going to rip your head off on Father's Day. Be a good time to take the family vacation, dads. I believe moms have the greatest impact. It's not just me. Paul said this. Paul said this, said this, and this is not a great uh, dissertation about theology this morning. It's more practical. Uh, I get it. 2 Timothy 1, 5. You know what Paul said about an influencer? Paul being an influencer said about a pastor. He said, look, I, rem I remember your genuine faith. Timothy was a warrior, man, for Jesus. Where did it come from? He said, it first filled your grandmother Lois. And then your mama, Eunice. And I know that same faith continues strong in you. Mama, excuse me, grandmother, mother, son. No mention of the dad. I'm telling you, you mamas, you're something else. Now, for that reason, listen to me. And this is why I had to land on this topic. And if you've been at Crossbrand a long time, some of you have gotten mad because I don't talk about mamas on Mama's Day. It's just I've never been moved by the Spirit to do that. You Pentecostals like that, don't you? Woo. <laughs> but today I have. And the thing that kept coming to my mind, number one, we're losing a generation. Number two, mamas, mamas are powerful influencers. <clears throat> so therefore, why am I here? If those two things are true. By the way, do y'all think those two things are true? Okay, and, and, and I know in some situations that you're a single dad. You're right, I get it. But in most situations, what I said was true. And if those two things are true, then why in the world are you and I not pouring into a mom that's raising somebody under the age of 18? Why is it this church? Why aren't you personally pouring into someone Maybe it's a grandmother. Many of you know grandmothers now that are mom. It's like going to a resale shop. They got to be mom again. If that happened at my house, shoot us both. What I'm saying, some of you grandmothers are being moms again. 
right? So what am I doing today? Why am I here? I'm telling you, I'm here because I believe that I need to speak to moms that are raising kids right now. Um, what's, I'm not saying what's done is done with millennials. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying that we don't still have an influence on our kids, but I'm telling you, if you got them raised, they crazy like mine, we ain't got much influence. Right, Paul? I mean, right, guys? Who has the most ability, the most powerful in ability to influence kids right now? Mamas raising kids. Mamas raising kids. Why are we not helping them? So this is what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about moms, and we're going to talk about the obligation of every believer. Now, if you're not a believer, you're off the hook today. If you haven't followed Jesus, had that one time on purpose, on your own experience with Jesus, I get it. <clears throat> Last thing you need to be worried about is family ethics pertaining to a single mom that lives down the road from you. What you need to be thinking about is Jesus. But for those of us who have followed Jesus, it is my belief if we want to reach the unreached and teach the unreached, excuse me, reach the unreached and teach the reach, we can do it by proxy through mamas. That's what I believe. So you think about it. You think about it. We got single moms that are here today. You've either had a widow, you've been widowed, you're divorced, or you or, or you've been never married. And uh, I, I think you have a uh, you've got a weight, you've got a load. But let me tell you something. Don't you think for a second you're not in Scripture. Don't you think for a second that God has not um, recognized single motherhood. There was a story of Hagar. I don't know if you remember, but that's uh, Sammy Hagar's great-grandmother. It worked twice, Paul. Both services. Man, I'm good. I cannot believe some of you younger to know who he is. Hagar. The story's in Genesis 21. Read it. Um, it was a bad deal, but her and her son were basically kicked out by Abraham. And she went into the wilderness to die, but God heard the boy crying. The angel of God called to Hagar from heaven. Hagar, what's wrong? Don't be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. And you know, God had a heart for single moms. As a result, whether you like it or not, whether, I mean, this is not a religious argument, this is not pro-con, but the nation of Islam started right there. That's Ishmael. God loves single mamas. You are not alone. And then, you know, there's stories in Scripture about married but single. You ever heard of that? Married but single. Because some of you moms are doing it all by yourself. You got dads that are as useless as a bull in a dairy barn. Think about that one. I mean, seriously, you're doing it all by yourself. Uh, some of your some of your husbands are saved, but they're just really weak. They they wouldn't know, you know, nothing about scripture, and they're not not available. Uh, some of your husbands are unsaved and they're not helping you with raise kids. And you know, Paul talks about that in Corinthians. He said, you, do, you hang in there. Don't leave them just because they're unsaved. Stick in there. You can sanctify the household. Some of you have are, are, are married, though. That, uh, and, you know, you've got a good man and he's helping with the nurturing. That's wonderful. You, some of you grandparents are now the moms. But here's what I want you to know. Today I'm talking to you moms. Are you grandmothers that are serving as a uh, second round mom to anybody under the age of 18 or if you still have care over that's that's who I'm talking to if you've never heard me talk about it today is your day listen online whoever share this when you get home today share this I need you to talk, think about this you folks that are doing this by yourself or almost by yourself But also the people that are what I call the not not the mamas. When, uh, when we my kids are growing up, there's a show called Dinosaurs. You know, it's right up there with Veggie Tales. Okay, it wasn't, but whatever. 
It's dang good. And that little old dinosaur would sit in that dinosaur high chair. His daddy would come around and he'd say, Dada. Say, Dada. <gasps> Not the mama. So if you're the not the mama right now, and by not the mama today, I define not the mama by anybody that's not raising kids right now. So if you've got grown kids, if you're grandparents, if you're a man, or if you're a teenager, listen, all of us, none of us in here are off the hook if you're not the mama. Um, I know some of you are tired. You've got your kids grown, you think. The only ones laughing are the grandparents. But I'm telling you, I, I feel that I am just as responsible for my four grandchildren as I was my children. And it will be different. And you know, one of the ways I'm going to do it is I'm going to pour into their mamas. I'm going to pour into their mamas. Because mamas make the difference. And so I have two challenges for you this morning. Number one, if you are a mom, here's what I believe. I believe you're a nurse, a dietitian, an Uber driver, a disciplinarian, a coach, a monster killer, a happy plate food finisher. But I also believe that you're the preacher and the counselor and you are the great theologian in your family to your baby. And so here's what I challenge you to do because you are that, Mom. Listen to me. You have a special, God has a special place in your heart, in his heart, if you're doing this by yourself. Even if you're married and you're still doing it by yourself, know this. Number one, I challenge you as, as mamas, please, please, I challenge you to make sure you got the right influencers in your life and in the life of your child. The great story is Hannah in 1 Samuel 1, she could not have a baby. She pleaded, would God have a baby? Please let me have a baby. And she had a baby boy, and his name was Samuel, and she dedicated him to the Lord. But here's what she did, and I can read the scripture to you. She dedicated, she said, so now I'm giving him to the Lord. He will belong to the Lord his whole life, and they worshiped him. But let me break that down in practical what she did was she took him to a man of influence. In other words, she said, for me to produce a child that's going to be the man that God wants, I need to surround him with people who will cultivate the ability to do that. And that man's name was Eli. Matter of fact, he taught him how to listen to the Lord. First time Samuel heard from the Lord in the Old Testament is a little different. Some of you think you hear from the Lord. You probably just need to take a roll aid. It's a little different the way people heard from the Lord in the Old Testament. And the Lord spoke to Samuel, and Samuel didn't know what it was. And he said, Eli, what do you need? Because he lived in the temple, uh, in, in the back of the temple. Eli said, I didn't call you. And finally, Eli said, I'll tell you what to do. You, you say when that happens, Lord, I'm listening. Eli was his influence. Eli taught him how to listen to the Lord. And Samuel would be the one man that was able to hold one of the biggest, baddest kings of Israel accountable, David. So, Mom, you're raising that baby. Number one, who is your influencer? Who is speaking into your life? Who is speaking into your life? And who are you exposing your kids to? Because they, they got, depending on which, I know some of us have conservative schools, but many of you do not have conservative schools. The family structure is changing. Why is it changing? Probably not because you've done it. Issues of gender and sexuality, not because you have. Somebody else has got your babies eight hours a day. And number two, mom, who is your influencer? Just think about it. Who, who is your influencer? Who's speaking into your life? Now, I don't want to labor here long, but mamas, listen to me. I love you. So many people at Crossman love you, but most importantly, God has a place in his heart for you moms that are trying 
to get those babies grown. Please, I challenge you, like Hannah, make sure the people that are speaking into your life and the people that are speaking into your child's life will create the end goal. You want a child that follows Jesus? Put people in your life and their life that follow Jesus. And the second challenge I have to you mamas that are trying your best is I just hope that your level of communion is healthy with the with the ultimate parent. In other words, consistent communion with the ultimate parent is going to be refreshing, rejuvenating. It'll help you get that baby where that baby belongs. You see, our father was the epic parent, the ultimate parent. He understands where you're going. And so I would ask this. How is your mama? Listen to me. How is your prayer life? How is your Bible reading? And you're saying, I, 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 I don't have time. Hey, I can remember when my wife used to fake needing to go to the bathroom just to get away from them. You know who I'm talking to. Mom, it's no time to be self-righteous right now. But what's bad is you go in there and you ain't in there five seconds and there's a bunch of little fingers stuck under the door. Mom! Mom! I know it's difficult. We have a, a resource here we'd love to give you. It's called Right Now Media. You can stick those ear pods in your ear and ignore your children while you listen to Jesus stuff. Thank the Lord. But not only that, I, I just, one of the greatest things is your kids, you cannot start young enough with a prayer. You cannot start young enough with scripture and you don't have to do it in a rigid, stupid, judgmental way. I saw my daughter, McKenna, a.k.a. Cletus. She was reading to the wild man. Yeah, to her baby, and you're saying, well, good job. No, 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 he wasn't born yet. He wasn't born yet. She propped that Bible up on her tummy, and she's reading to him Bible stories. And I'm thinking, man, if he ends up with that hair like John the Baptist and walking around half naked eating locusts, we're in trouble. <laughs> she did it. That's, I, I challenge you. Listen. God loves you, mamas, and I know you're trying. I know now more than ever after watching my wife and watching my daughters, I know you're trying. And we, lo I love you. I love you so much, and I respect you so much. But more importantly, Jesus does. The second thing I want you to know, y'all hold on. I may sound a little judgmental, and I'm not angry, but here's what I do know. If you're sitting here and you're a follower of Jesus and you, you do not have a, a child that you're taking care of, you may have sat back and said, well, I'm going to drink this cup of coffee and I'm going to get out of here. No, sir, you're not. <laughs> if you call yourself a follower of Jesus, me, then, then we embrace Jesus' words. And through the Apostle Paul, Jesus would say in Galatians 6, share each other's burdens. And in this way, you will be like Jesus. You obey Jesus, you will only do that through the way you treat people. And how are we treating these mamas? So I say today, commit to help her. Would you, for the love of God, do something? Yeah, I'm praying for it. Well, that's fine, but do something. Matter of fact, James said in James chapter 2, show, how, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds. In other words, you don't tell everybody you're a believer. Don't flash your Sunday school uh, pins around or put them signs out in the yard tell you what church you go to. Why don't you love on some people? That's the number one mark of being a Christian. And I'm saying, if she's struggling, pay her bill. Babysit for her. And I know that freaks some of y'all out. Right? I, this is not, I'm not being disrespectful, but I told y'all a few weeks ago about that free grazer at my house, that trespasser, a dang cat. She comes in my house, onto our place. She was not invited. She's a dang cat. And then, you know what she does? Has six more cats. And 
so I watched her. She's a good mom. I felt so guilty about talking about her two weeks ago at church. I petted her last week. <laughs> Y'all shut up. But listen, some of you uh, may take offense to this, but ask the lady that it, the analogy is related to, and she did not take offense to it. So she had all them babies, and she has wiped the barn out of varmints, snakes, mice, small dogs, right? And so uh, I, I was seeing them cats screaming and hollering. They was in there just to holler, just to holler, just to holler. And I looked out, and she is laying under one of our trucks, Really, not in a real smart place, right by the tire. And Honey was down there, and I, and sometimes the devil comes in me. I said, look at that cat, honey. She reminds me of you. She would rather risk her uh, life for a, uh, a nap than to go in there and feed them kids. She said, amen, brother. <laughs> Sometimes it got that bad. You just want a nap. And you know, some of you dads, some of us dads, just, again, just useless, looking over there, seeing her fall out everywhere in her chair. And you're not helping. You, you need to help. Stop being such a useless punk, dad, and help. Change a diaper, buy them clothes, send her to the spa. There's some moms that the only, I mean, now you may have to get an EMT in there to resuscitate them after they take a massage because they, they won't be able to get off the table. Ma'am, your time is up. I'm sorry, I ain't leaving. I ain't leaving ever. I get it. I'm saying, if you call yourself a person of faith, why don't you why don't you do something for that mama? And then I'm going to ask you to do this. If you call yourself a person of faith, think of that mama. If the Lord had already laid her on your heart. Think of that mama and commit to encourage her. Some, it, it would blow your mind. It would blow your mind. How many people have never said a word to a mama? Hey, you're doing a good job. Atta boy. Hang in there. See, Paul said it's, it's not rocket science. Therefore, encourage one another. Build each other up. When's the last time you sent them a note, sent them a text, sent them a scripture? Just let them know you're praying for them, which brings me to my final deal. I hope you'll commit to pray for them. Now, listen, here's what I've found in my 58 years, and I've been a believer since I was 19. I've found usually when somebody walks in front of me, they're in front of me in line, or they come to mind, that is a trigger of, I know it's going to sound weird, a trigger of the Holy Spirit for me to pray for. There's good triggers. And so I'm saying some of the best things you can do, confess your sins, Paul said, or James said, but he said pray for each other. And so often we forget that. You call yourself a believer. And you say, I want to invest in the next generation, and I don't know how. I'm telling you how. Pick a mama that has the power to change the world and is the, is the number one influencer in a group of children that are walking away from faith. You want to make a difference? Pour yourself into that mama. As I close, there was a, a rough old evangelist. He used to be a ba baseball player. He said even when he was preaching, he'd still fight a little bit. Would preach in those tents. Sawdust, his name's Billy Sunday. But he attributed so much of what the Lord would do in his life from his mother. And he said there's more power in a mother's hand than in the king's scepter. And boy, he's right. Isn't he? He is. As dads have our place, there is a place. We'll talk about that later, but I'm telling you, mamas are powerful. Thank you.
But today, I think, mamas, I just needed to encourage you. If I could get you all in a room and just tell you how much I'm proud of you and how much I love you and how, how much it's, it's going to be okay. Now, there might be some things we need to do, but it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Matter of fact, there's a group of moms here that have got their babies raised and they sat right where you're sitting and they didn't think it was going to be okay. the angel telling one of those mamas in the New Testament nothing is impossible with God there's going to be some prayer partners down here and we just want you to know we're going to practice what we preach if we can help you at cross brand we want you to tell us but secondly once you leave here with your hard heart if you call yourself a follower of Jesus and not commit to make a difference in the next generation through a mama. Let's pray. Father, if there's someone here this morning that does not know you, we, w- we want to give them two deals. You know, there's there's two, two things that I would say. If they know for sure they've never had that on purpose, one time experience, you know, Lord, I just pray that you'll give them either the strength to invite you into their life for, ask for forgiveness right now that number two they would find their way down front find one of these prayer partners and just inquire Lord we thank we are thankful for our mamas we're thankful for this crowd today I pray father that your word will land where it needs to land in our hearts in Christ's name amen God bless you y'all have a great Mother's Day <laughs>